Hey, fabulous people, look, I have a different perspective on this whole ban and Trump situation. Like, the mainstream media has one perspective, and I have a different perspective. And typically, I have a different perspective than a lot of people have. I look at this Bannon situation, and I look at it and say this was st- strategic by Bannon. Bannon did this deliberately because this was something he had planned on doing for a while. He was terminated, fired, it was, with an F. Now, there was no R, there was no resignation. He was fired. And he's been angry about it ever since. And I said it a long time ago after he got fired that he's going to systematically try to destroy Trump. He's going to do gradual things that will hurt Trump consistent over time. And he did it. And he went to do something even greater. Because if you look at what Bannon did, what Bannon did was a winning strategy. Bannon went scorched earth knowing it was an inopportune time because he knows that the Trump tannic is sinking. He knows that something's going to come out from Mueller. And he's trying to be on the side where he's not going to jail. Okay. So he could care less about trying to protect Trump when he knows Trump's presidency is going down to burning flames. What he's trying to do is protect himself. That's what he did. And he won this round. People can sit here and talk about how the alt-right, some of these alt-right people like the, the failing Richard Spencer, who is like no longer really of significance, but people keep on talking about him like he is. But he's really just a joke who got um, de-verified on Twitter. But nevertheless, they talk about him and how he's mad at Bannon, etc. But nevertheless, the thing is, the truth is, that doesn't matter. Steve Bannon knew that would happen. That wasn't something that wasn't calculated. He knew that was part of the equation. Because if he really wanted to protect the alleged imposter of the White House, like he claimed he loved him when he said on that radio show yesterday, if he really wanted to protect him, then the easiest way to protect him would have been, first of all, why don't you just refute the things that are being said in the Fire and Fury book? Refute them. But no, you didn't refute them, you didn't admit them, and you didn't deny them. How does that help Donald Trump? Think about the things that you're saying in that book. You're saying that Don Trump Jr., um, his conduct was treasonous. You're saying that Trump knew about the Russia meeting with Don Trump Jr. And that Trump, um, Donald Trump Jr. basically took the Russians up to meet Donald Trump. You believe that? You're also saying that you told Donald Trump not to fire Comey, that it was going to um, lead to his impeachment. You're saying that Ivanka Trump is a dumb as a rock. You're saying that, um, that what Mueller's looking at is money laundering, that they need to be looking at money laundering, that it's, it's a criminal money laundering. That's what you kept on saying. Those are the things you're saying, Bannon. And you know those things are out there in the public sphere when there is this hypersensitivity to this Russia investigation because of all of the things that have been revealed and not to mention there have been two indictments and um, two guilty pleas. So people know right now that there is a criminal investigation that is serious, an investigation that likely will bring down the empire. And you knew those things were out there. So if you were really a proponent of Trump and the Trump agenda, you wouldn't have let those things just go unchecked. But you did. Why? And that's the question people should be asking. He knew that he was going to face the wrath from these Trump sicko fans and from these Trump loyalists. He knew he would. He knew he didn't have the actual power with these entities the way that Trump did to be able to spew ridiculousness. He knew he didn't have a Sarah Huckabee Sanders that gets shamelessly covered all the time by the shameless, pathetic, thirsty media every single day to spew propaganda. He knew he didn't have that. He knew that he would anger the Breitbart Um, supporters because they only go there to hear Trump news. It's Trump Bart. So he knew he was going to do that. He knew he would anger Mercer. So why does he do it? Because he's trying to leave a sinking ship. He's not going to be like the band on the um, Titanic that's in their plane while the ship is um, ship is sinking. Nah, he's going to be the one that pulls the cord and is like, yo, I'm out. See you guys. Hopefully you get to the other side. That's the kind of person Bannon is. So Bannon saw a sinking ship and decided to get himself out of it. At the same time, he took an opportunity to seek revenge that in, in retrospect, in hindsight, when people are looking back, they can say when the ship sinks, Bannon can say, look, I'm insulated from this. I went after him at the most inopportune time. I said exactly what I thought was true. I never refuted anything that was in that book. And he came after me and I still said that I loved him. But I said the truth at that time. I was trying to warn people that he wasn't going to be able to do certain things, that his presidency was effectively over. Now look at what is going on. You think he's not going to be able to win later on if he goes and says that? And people start coming back to him and say, Bannon was the one we should have been listening to. Bannon's a long-term thinker, even though, you know, he's a joke when it comes to, like, political candidates. But Bannon strategized this one out, and he won on it. Because what he did also do, even though he angered and, and, and um, so many people in the Trump loyalist sicko fan base, he also got a small percentage of the Trump base to be angry with Trump. So even if you say it's 5%, Trump can't afford to lose 5% of his base when he's at 32% approval rating. I mean, you're talking about a 27% of the country now approving you if you lose 5% of that base, which is Nixonian territory, which is around the numbers when they brought the articles of impeachment, even though Nixon resigned. But still, when they brought the articles of impeachment, Nixon was at, like what, 29%? 
So when your approval rating's that low, it makes you much more impeachable. And you think Bannon wants Trump to continue being the most powerful person when Bannon can't benefit from that? And Bannon believes that he's the one who made you that person? So what does Bannon do? He makes Trump much more impeachable. He makes him much more impeachable and then distance himself from the Trump campaign. Says, basically, I had nothing to do with any of this stuff that's happening. Don't put me in the criminal investigation. He goes and um, ruins himself, basically, with a certain wing of the party. Right? He goes and does that while he pulls out the part of the base that loves him. And when Trump is unable to get that wall built, which he will be, he will not get that wall built. And when Trump is unable to bring this great infrastructure plan, and when Trump is unable to give everybody health care, and when Trump is able to get Mexico to pay for it, and when all those things start to happen, and people start realizing the only thing he did was help corporations by this tax scam bill. Do you think Bannon wants to be a part of that? Bannon knows that the only major legislation that Trump's going to be able to get in before 2018 is that tax bill. And what Bannon also knows is that 2018, Bannon doesn't have the candidates that can actually win in 2018. He may be able to do damage to the Republican Party, but he doesn't have winning candidates. And who's going to support him after he lost in Alabama? So he alleviates himself of the burden of having to bring on these candidates and, and to attack the Republican establishment. He alleviates the burden of having to be a flunky for Trump, continuously being a flunky for Trump. He pulls out some of the Trump base by getting some of the Trump base angry because you'll see comments from them as well, which the mainstream media won't cover. Where they're saying Trump is an establishment hack, where Trump is an establishment pawn, that Trump is a rhino, Republican name only, that Trump is a fraud. They'll say things like Bannon 2020, like I support Bannon over Trump, Trump is a liar. You'll see all those comments from Bannonites. All he needed to do was pull like 5%. He doesn't need that many people to be successful. Who is he? He doesn't have a real position. The person who has a real position is the imposter in the White House. The only person who had anything to lose was Trump. And Bannon had nothing to lose. He already lost his job. He was fired with an F. Fired. Not There was no R. He was fired. He already lost his job. And he's working at a failing organization. Congratulations. Woo, so much to lose. Breitbart, yay. You lost your job at Breitbart. You are no longer the chairman of Breitbart. Wow. So much to lose. No, what Brandon's going to go do is write a tell-all book and tell every single thing that transpired and make millions of dollars doing so. That's all he's got to do. And then he'll make himself extremely popular when Trump goes down in burning flames because he'll be like, look, I told you guys this guy was a fraud and he wasn't going to be able to get these things done. I'm trying to save the republic and make himself look like the, re- the, the, the you know, white nationalist hero later on when they realize that Trump is a complete and total fraud. So Bannon did this for a multitude of reasons, but at the end of the day, Bannon actually won. It doesn't matter whether or not they're mad at him right now. Because at the end of the day, the only person who really had to deliver was the imposter in the White House, and he's not going to be able to deliver. And they're not going to let him deliver. They just got him to sign the biggest scam tax bill, and it's all going to fall on him at the end of the day. Because who blames legislation on Congress, even though Congress writes the legislation? They always blame it on the president. That's why Obamacare is Obama. Obamacare is Obama. That's legislation. But no, it was Obama. It's all his fault. Everything that happens with that is his fault. Legislation gets blamed on the president. So they just gave him a tax scam bill that he signed off and gave him all the praise for it. So they can alleviate themselves when the burden, when the trillion plus dollar debt comes to fruition. So let's just be honest here. This whole thing about Bannon's ruin, whatever. Bannon's ruined from what? From what? He had no real position in the first place. What he did was solidify himself in the future. And make sure that he's no longer responsible for what happens in the, in the presidency that's going down in burning flames. He removed himself from Mueller and made himself much more likely to be a witness for Mueller. And somebody who's comfortable talking to Mueller. Which now puts him on a different side of the investigation. Instead of being a suspect, you are now somebody who will be a cooperating witness. Bannon strategized the hell out of this one. And Trump took the bait by going after Bannon. And making it, let's end Bannon. Good, end him now. So you can make him literally a Mueller agent. That was great. That was smart. That was really, really smart. I mean, that's the one thing about being so good and so smart like Trump. You make good decisions, right? Great decisions. Going scorched earth on Steve Bannon was a horrific decision. It will have catastrophic consequences. And I'm telling you, Steve Bannon calculated and maneuvered this one. He knew everything that was going to happen. Because he knew everything was going to happen. As much as I despise Steve Bannon, I'm happy to see him fall from grace. Good riddance. But the truth is, what did he lose? Ooh, the public op- opinion on Steve Bannon, the, uh, the, um, the, uh, uh, what? But the public opinion on the president, that does matter. That matters. And Steve Bannon knew that. So this one goes to Steve Bannon.